Okay, let's do it. I drew Harry. Nice. That's really good. Thanks, dude. Some people have said, why didn't you take more art classes? I can see why you didn't. You didn't need to. Exactly. You already knew everything. I knew, I, knew, I knew everything. I can see why they said it. Hey, brother! And welcome, everyone, to a mega edition of J vs. Ben. We know, just like us, you guys are all stuck in quarantine, so we figured we'd give you some extra long content. We have a 40 question Harry Potter quiz today with questions all submitted by our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for submitting all of those questions and for keeping us entertained during these very boring times. Are you nervous? I am so nervous. Normally we know like the kind of, like we know what's the Molly and Arthur quiz. Yeah. So I can like, I can like think about them. You can mentally think, prep. Right. This is like Everything. all Harry Potter wide open. Like there could be movie questions. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic Beasts questions. Cursed Child. Potter, oh, there won't be Cursed Child. Could there be? I won't know the answers. Let's find out. Here we go. Hey, brother. Guys, because this particular quiz is not taken from Pottermore or the Wizarding World website, and it was actually generated by our patrons, we have actually put together the quiz. So if you would like to play along at home, there is still a link in the description down below. Here's how it's going to work in case this is your first J versus Ben. Our guest host, Seamus Gorman, all the way from the UK, will be asking us the questions. Ben and I must answer them from memory only. But if we both agree, we can get the full multiple choice set from him. So there is multiple choice. There they is exist. still multiple they, okay, choice. Okay, okay. That gives me some solace that like in a in a worst case scenario, we can still back ourselves up here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Question one. Who was the first person to notice that Harry could talk to snakes? Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, this um, is, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. I know. Oh, what's his stupid name? It's like something like this. That's not right. Oh, no, it is. I, I know exactly who it is, but I can't think of what his name is. I think I've got it. This is this is a tricky first question. This is a tricky first question. Unless the answer is the boa constrictor. The answer is not the boa constrictor. It is the first person. Okay. And you are, if you're thinking of that, you're in the right place. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I know precisely who uh, this I, is. I can tell you just can't think of his name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have it. Oh. I don't think it's in there. Excellent for me. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Pierce Polkus. Marty Masters. Ah, oh, Pierce You've Polkus got that right. spot on. Yes! Yeah. I knew that it was alliterative. Yeah. I knew that it was Dudley's I knew that friend. it was Dudley's friend. Yeah. I yeah. think everyone knew you knew what character you just yeah. remember the name. If that's setting the tone for the rest of this quiz, this might get hard. Well, this is it's gonna be hard to tell because normally like the Pottermore ones like escalate in difficulty. So normally the first few are kind of gimmies, but who right. knows what we're gonna get here. I know, I know. You know what? I think she describes Pierce Polkus as looking like a rat. I know, I was thinking that it's same the thing. the same alliterative name as Peter Pettigrew. Oh, weird. Oh, did Peter Pettigrew have a son? What? No. What? Probably not. Question two, what school did Dudley go to? All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Smeltings! That's correct. Yeah. All I, I, all I could think of was the smelting stick. This is really oh, a, <laughs> What a Dursley questions here. Right. <laughs> Question three. What was the name of the wizard who refused to wear trousers at the Quidditch World Cup because he likes a nice healthy breeze around my privates? Oh, gosh. Whoa. Man, okay, okay. Oh, I can like, I can like taste it. You know, it's like in the air. Oh, okay. Let's do multiple choice. I, I'm I would sure go, I'll go multiple when choice. I, hear it. I think I think I will know it if I hear it as well. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down. Option one, Andrew Ameslow. Option two, Angus Ameslow. Option three, Arnold Ameslow. And option four, Archie Ameslow. So they all have the sur surname Ameslow. Okay. The options are Andrew, Angus, uh, Arnold, or I'm Archie. I'm frustrated. People will Archie. know that I wrote it down before Seamus read the answers to us. You would have known this? I not I wouldn't have gotten the last name, but I did I did remember the first name. Okay. Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Archie. Archie. Yep. Both correct. Goodness me. Woo! I did Ooh. I did know it once I heard it, but the fact that you remember that I feel like has got to be just such a bizarre testament to the kind of knowledge that you digest. Question four. 
Where did Severus Snape introduce himself to Lily Evans? How, like, 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 how specifically? Yeah, what do you mean? It just says, where did Severus Snape introduce himself to Lily Evans? Um, it, it's okay. It's looking for like a, a type of place rather than like the the specific like location. Okay. So it's not looking for like the, the whatever road it was. Gotcha. It, it's looking for like a specific type of place. Okay. okay. I guess that makes sense. Three, two, one. Is that at the park? Is that at the playground at yeah. Spinner's End? By yeah, the, the, swings. The, the correct answer is at the playground. Okay. Okay, I think that's yeah, that's, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Okay. It's just a different word for the same thing. Because that's like the scene where she uh, like flies off of the swing and goes like unnaturally far and then has like a rather like right. soft yeah. landing. Yeah. Yeah. Is Spinner's End correct? Is that where they are? Or is that where is that where Snape's house is? Is that's the town he lives in, so presumably it is where Lily's family was from as well. Okay, okay, cool. Fantastic beast question. Oh, of question five What year did Jacob Kowalski come back from Europe after World War One? So there's got to be like so he a says following... a line in there when they're talking about the World War, and oh, he gosh. goes, oh, I didn't come back until so See, and so year. You both have to know the year that Fantastic Beasts takes place in and how long they've been back. I think he specifically says a year. Does I, he? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's the moment where him and Newt are walking down the street and he's like, yeah, of course I was in the war. Everybody was in the war. Yeah, that's the thing I'm thinking of. Okay. So, I mean, there's probably a bit of historical knowledge that you could apply to this just to know. So he works at the candy yeah, factory. Yeah, you've got, the, you've got yeah. the timeline between World War One ending and Fantastic Beasts starting. All right. Like, that's eight years. <laughs> yeah. So there's like a guess. <laughs> How long has he been working at the factory? I, I, I've never gotten the impression that he's been working at the factory for like a very long time. But, yeah. but maybe maybe that's me just completely glazing over this particular detail. Never seemed that important until now. Never seemed that important until now. Okay, well, I can only guess. Even if we get the multiple choice, it's just going to be a series of years between, like, 1918 and 1926. Not to narrow it in for you. No, that's that's exactly what I would have done anyway, so that that doesn't make a bit of difference. I'm just trying to think of, would would he have come home before the war was over? I'm going to take a shoddy shot in the dark. Okay. Ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one. 1924. Jonathan, you've got that spot on. Have I? Yeah. Yeah! (laughs) Wow! Amazing for me! How? Did you remember it? No, not at all. I was just like, you. well, like you said, I don't feel like he's been working at the canning place very long, and 1925 would have been just one year prior to the movie starting. So I was like, two years. <laughs> two two that, years. That was Instead. my reasoning. I don't know if it made sense, but it did get me the right answer. <laughs> well, that's infuriating, as always. Sorry. Question six. When is Ron's birthday? Curious. Very curious. Indeed. Mm. Do you have a guess? I have a I have a a, a gander. Mm. But it's I don't think it's right. But like I can't I can't I can only I can vaguely guess months. Well I'm taking my stab because I think I, I'm gonna start to need it here soon if I don't start pulling some things out of a sure. witch's hat. Absolutely. In the meantime, I'm just drawing Harry Potter over here. With my expert art skills. Okay, there we go. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. July sixth. March third. 1980. You are so close, Ben. You're going to be oh, so mad. Are you really? It's March 1st, no 1980. No way! Oh Man. My gosh. I thought one of us had totally stabbed oh. it in the dark. That would have been insane. Oh, I was so What was your reasoning for March? <laughs> well, because it's the month of March now, and I'm pretty sure Wizarding World posted about it oh. recently. I, would, I knew it was early March. I thought it seemed very J.K. Rowling to have it be 3-3. Three, three. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, there's I was more like, logic to that. Yeah. Well, because they don't really mention Ron's birthday in the books ever, which I feel like they would, which made me think it had to take place somewhere in the very narrow time period where Harry doesn't see Ron, so his birthday happens off page. So that's how I said it on July, and then I was like, sixth brother. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think the big thing is, for one, Ron can take the apparition test mm, when Harry cannot. That's true. So he is, like, we know that he's older enough to where it would have been, like, a big deal if it was, like, yeah. two weeks off. So All anyway, right. that's that's what I had going for so me. So close. Man, I can't believe that. I hope, I hope someone at, at home gives me, like, just like a I understand that if Ben still loses, he still loses. But like, you know, if it's by one, it's right there. Yeah. 1924 though, guys. Let's talk more about that. (laughs) Let's talk more about that. Question seven. 
According to Moaning Myrtle, how many points do you receive if you throw a book through her head? Three, two, one. Fifty. Ten. Jonathan's got another point. Yes! Oh! Because it's 50 if it goes through her head. I was guessing based on movie Myrtle. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I was okay. like, mm, this could be a thing that changed and I'm just, whatever. Right. Okay. Great. I'll, I'll deal with it. Let's carry on. Question eight. What was the make and model of the car Ron and Harry crashed into the Whomping Willow? Three, two, one. Board Anglia. Board Anglia. Spot on. Sp spot on. Spot on. Uh, correct. Yes, that was correct. All right. Are, are Fords actually rather common in the UK? Common enough, yeah. Common enough? Okay. Okay. Are they common here? I, uh, Incredibly. Yeah, they're, yes, I yes. mean, they're American yeah. made, so. They are Henry Ford. Exactly. You heard of them? Question nine. What is the name of Aunt Marge's bulldog? Ah. I know this. Oh. Okay. Three, two, one. Ripper. Ripper. Spot on. Yeah. Although I think she actually has many dogs. Oh, she does. But that's the I one that comes with her. Yeah. 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 Question 10. Who wrote Dumbledore's obituary in the Daily Prophet? Oh. Psh, psh, psh. Three, two, one. Elpheus Doge. That's Dog the breath one. Doge himself. That's the one. Yep. Yeah, you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> Question 11. Where did Hermione Granger send her parents to hide from Voldemort? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Australia. Australia. Do you know that sticks in my mind as where Hermione lives all the time? Do you think that she lives in Australia? Like, I know she doesn't, but when I imagine her going home for the summer, she's in Australia. I know she's not, but that's what <laughs> Okay, head. the thing about Hermione's parents is that, like, she is this totally well-adjusted person with loving parents, mm. and yet if there is the absolute truth that you can't not have Hermione be places, right. like, over Christmas, like, holiday and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, basically, from the time Hermione turns, like, 11, her parents don't see her. <laughs> Like, <laughs> barely. She's, like, anytime she's home, it's like, oh no, I got the owl from Ron, so my parents understood. Hermione, they haven't seen you for like years. Yeah, they're seeing her for about two weeks at a time. Right. For seven years. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> no. Oh my god. It's so sad. I'm very impressed, Ron. We've only got one wrong so far. Like, that is. And yeah. it was a. A, a 1 in 365 guess. It was more Man. than that, technically, if you didn't know the year. True, true. <laughs> I didn't know the year. <laughs> you didn't know the yeah. year. So you got half of it right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I got half of it right, too. <laughs> I'm talking about my half point. <laughs> you technically got two thirds right. <laughs> anyway, question 12. Even though the book refused, what act of magic did Neville do that caused the Quill to try to enter his name for Hogwarts? Oh, the book of the Quill and Book of Acceptance. That's oh. the book it's talking about. Mm. I think that we've had this question before. So I'm I'm either completely wrong in misunderstanding the question, or <coughs> I know it. Okay. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Uncle algae dropping him out a window, but I don't think that's it. Yeah, that's not. Oh. I played. He bounced when he was dropped out of. Oregon. I think that's the one where they, where the book and the quill agreed. I think there was a one before that. Okay, uh, so the, 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 the correct answer is snuggled his blankets around himself. Sure. Okay. I don't know if that's any. I don't. I don't know if like. I don't know. Because <laughs> I think. Hmm. That was the thing where they knew he was, like, where his family knew it wasn't a squib. Okay, in that case, yeah, no, I do, I do remember this vaguely now. Is this a is this a Pottermore question? Oh yeah, because yeah. it's about the Book of Acceptance. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That was a very difficult one. That was a very difficult. I was going to say you guys should have gone to the multiple choice because I was like, Man, I'm not I wouldn't have this. known it either. Way. I, I don't <laughs> think I would have gotten that either. I, and I feel like it's maybe lacking. Is it, there was like a moment where like he would have been too cold, but he like magicked the blankets around him or something? Oh, maybe something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Question 13. Who did Neville have to jog back and give the sorting hat to amid glares of laughter? Three, two, one. Professor McGonagall. Correct answer was Morag McDougal. Oh. I don't believe that's correct. I'm very confused by what it's referring to, to be honest with you. Is that the next person in line after probably, Longbottom? Probably, yeah. That is baloney. Oh, wait. So yeah, they're yeah. saying he gets sorted, runs at the table, and then had to head back to give the sorting hat to McDougal Moran. Morag McDougal. This is who he would give it to. All right. This is who he would give it to. Yeah, this is I mean, the person we, doing it. We missed it in the exact same way. Yeah. I feel like it's a maybe a poorly phrased question. I, like, think, I feel like it's better to just say who was, who was, who after was Neville in the sorting ceremony. Yeah. Interesting about Morag McDougal, though, is 
Isn't Morag the name of... This is what I was just about to say, Aragog's wife. No, that's yeah. Mossag. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, good job. Mm-hmm. So she's just switching in and out letters for names. But then yeah. McDougal, no, even that's not right. I was going to say... Dougal McGregor. Dougal McGregor. Wow. Man. Lots of names. You're so, every witch whizzle here. It sounds like at this point in time, she had a couple of names scribbled in some margins there, and she's like, I'll come back to those. There's probably a way to perfect them. Yeah. I'm sorry, but if you're at home saying that you knew that one... I don't believe you. Also, we got it right. Question 14. We all remember Hermione's magical expanding bag, but what other time did we see the same type of spell used? Twice to my knowledge, but I'll write I'm also thinking there's twice. Yeah. But Um, I feel like there are maybe even more examples of this than two. Yeah. Unless there are like technically different charms, there are Mm. absolutely multiple occasions where something is made bigger on the inside than it would appear from the outside. Yes. I, I, I want to say it isn't the most obvious one, in my opinion. Well, I wrote down two, which I yeah. believe to be all three of which the same spell. Okay, Okay. well, yeah, I wrote yeah. down two as well. So okay. I, if, if one of these is correct and the other is wrong, then I would want expansion on what's different. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, three, two, one. Say, the Ministry of Magic Cars and the World Cup 10. The correct answer is on the Weasley's car when the back seat and trunk magically expand to hold everything for the trip to King's Cross. So okay. Ministry of Magic cars would be... No, not, no, it wouldn't, would it? Because it would be the Anglia that the Anglia. he's referring to. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It, it also is in the Ministry of Magic cars when they get picked up in Prisoner. The Fort Anglia does it, the Ministry cars do it, and the tent does it. What about Moody's trunk? Moody's trunk also, I think, has a bit of this so, happening. And I said this the was a the poor cup. question to say it was the only... It, it, what was the other time we see that happen? Because there's clearly multiple times. So, so we just get a point. Do you want to just get a point? We'll just get a point. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say give us a point because if anything, I feel like there are other there other are other ex- times. Yeah. Okay. Both um, get a point. Thanks, Seamus. Unless there was literally a different spell, I'll look up, I'll look it up when you're doing the next question. There you go. Okay. <laughs> question fifteen: How far did Harry throw the gnome that bit his finger? <gasps> what is the unit of measurement? The unit of measurement is feet. Oh, okay. Is feet? Oh, thank you. Feet. Okay. I would actually bet that in the books it is in yards. I would right? just say that if it's yards, it's way more impressive. <laughs> but you can convert it if you'd like. Well, I'm going to stick with it. Three, two, one. 50, 50 feet. feet. 50 feet it is. Ba-boom! I, the reason I thought that it was yards, and, and maybe I'm just wrong, or maybe I just, like, converted it into yards. I feel like I was shocked because 50 yards is so far. Yeah, can you imagine throw him throwing something half a football field? Yeah, no. I can't. Yeah, no. But, like, that's exactly. what seems, like, so remarkable about it. It's like, whoa, <laughs> like, that's so far. Right, yeah. If they had 50 yards of yard, that'd even be impressive. Also, just... Back to that last question. According to this, it is the extension charm. It is done multiple times, even in by Newt in Fantastic Beasts. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. His old trunk, yeah, his trunk, and charm. his what's it called Basement. his house. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, not the best question. No offense to the person who asked no that offense. question. Thank you so Thank much you. for contributing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now <laughs> I, you made me the bad guy. <laughs> we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. It's like Seamus is always the bad guy. <laughs> question sixteen. What is the name of the cat that Mrs. Fig left to make sure that Mundungus did not leave? Uh, Mundungus. I can never say his name. Uh, Mundungus just read this. I just read this. Oh, I got it. I could be completely wrong. This could just be a generic, like, cat name. Yeah. But three, two, one. Mr. Tibbles. That's a good hey! time. Nice. Yes. Outstanding. Social distance five? <laughs> three, two, one. Wow! Oh. Oh. The not contact heard around the world. Exactly. This question's gonna live up to its reputation. Question 17. Who was the uncle that Sirius inherited his gold from? Mm. Oh, but. Sometimes I wish, Seamus, that you had screen mirrors of what we write down. So do I. I really wish I knew what you'd written down. I know, because then it would be, be so funny to like have you taunt us based on what you know we wrote. <laughs> But I also feel like it would be a liability. Okay, I have a guess. All right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Alpheus Black? Alfard. Oh! Alfard Black. And you were right, it is a PH. Nice! (laughs) This was close, man. That that is, honestly, that that is not a bad stab in the dark. But since then was three points behind. I think Ben needs that point right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I got it wrong. That's fine. Man, I'm I'm proud of myself anyway. You were No, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. Question 18. When talking to Romulda Vane, what did Ginny say Harry had a tattoo of? Oh, this is always... Oh, this is... Um, 
It's which one did she make it up about? Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm okay. I'm locked. Three, two, one. Hungarian horntail. That's what I went with too. You got it. Yes. Whoop, whoop. Okay, because I'm like, Ginny, you think she's going to correct her, but instead she makes it more impressive than a hippogriff, which is what Romilda Vane initially thinks it is. Yes. And that's what it is. Yes. Oh, I told her it was a Hungarian horn too. Right, right, right. This is when Ginny's really becoming cool real yeah, fast. real fast. Question 19. What is the spell that puts a buzzing in nearby people's ears so you can have a private conversation? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Lovely auto. Yeah, that's awesome. right. Is that a There's no L in too? it. It is just Muffiato. I'm what? counting that. Yeah, I'm counting that too. Did you put Muffliato? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm basing it off of the word muffle. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Okay. But yeah. Wait, is it literally just I didn't even muffiato? notice until I just looked back down. So I'm not it's, convinced they don't have the typo. It's possible. Mu yeah. Muffiato, that though, does sound like the type of thing where you could almost hear the L even if it's not there. Yeah. Question 20. What was Neville's owl result in charms? O-W-L. Sorry. Okay, mm. so the thing you have to oh. keep in mind here is that this would be after having been a member of the DA. Yeah. So Neville would have like a considerable uptick in his confidence. Yeah. But I also still think that this was like... I've got... I, I recognize the trick of this question. Do you? I think so. I'll explain it afterwards. Three, two, one. E. A. Jonathan's got it. Yes. Exceeds expectation. Man, ah, I okay. almost went with that, but here's what happens. He's talking to McGonagall, and she tells him he only got an A on his OWL in Transfiguration, and she won't accept him. But she suggests Charms because he got an E in that, and Flitwick will accept him. And he says, "My grandma says Charms is a soft, soft option." Yes, oh, there my was. Gosh. Mm. That's yeah. That's frustrating. Question twenty one. What potion does Harry brew when Slughorn insists the class are to create something amusing? I just don't know, like, the funny wizard name for it. Okay, I got it, I think. Oh, this is so brutal. I think that it is something to do with this. You got it? No. Ah, oh, man. I think I don't know that I have it either, but I'm pretty sure. That, usually that means you have it. Okay. Three, two, one. Euphoria. Peace draft. So the correct answer is elixir to induce euphoria. That counts. Come on. Do you think it counts? Does it help that I said he adds a sprig of peppermint? Maybe. I don't want to not give it or give it and cause I, so I, <laughs> okay. that's right the, the only thing I would say is that I thought that it had something to do with peace which I don't know why but I felt like there was no chance that I was going to get it based on just the word peace I can tell you that he brews this because he wants to get Slughorn in a good mood so we can ask him about the memory and Slughorn is like ooh and I see you've added a sprig of peppermint which can counteract the occasional just, bouts of laughing just give him the point Okay. Yeah, come on. Okay, man. we'll give you the point. My argument was that euphoria is just a regular word, so it's like an elixir to induce that. The question was but, what potion people we'll, can determine we'll, whether or not. We'll just remember. We'll that. just remember. We'll it. just remember just that, remember like, it. if any, if at any point in time one of us is close, we're entirely wrong, and we need to give somebody a free point. <laughs> Do you want to get that mock third point? <laughs> <laughs> question twenty-two. How many Quidditch fouls are listed in the Department of Magical Games and Sports records? Oh, mm. man. Do they need an exact number? I'll say it's it's a round of 100, so... Oh, it's it, like it, a... It's, okay. Yeah. It's okay. a round 100? Yeah. That's helpful. Okay, I got you then. All right. Three, two, one. Seven hundo. Yes. What's up? Booyah. Excellent. And all of them were committed in one match at one point. They were. Yeah. I get the feeling that many of them were created because of said match. <laughs> it's like It was like the match was like, how many rules did this game? <laughs> like, this is Come getting on. out of hand. People are lighting people on fire. Question 23. In what year was Macusa founded? I bet it's on like a t-shirt we own. Oh no. We have like so many of those like Obliviator Squad yeah. things. There's a re- I don't know. There, for some reason, this is the number that comes to my mind. I don't know. I'm... Three, two, one. 1776. 1783. I mean, I can see why you've guessed that, but yeah. the correct answer is 1693. Really? Yeah. It is, but that's surprising That's why I was me. confused as well. Because this was just when America's founded. <laughs> right, Literally, yeah. Yeah. my yeah. last Google search. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, right? My thinking was like shortly after America yeah. was found, like enough time for it to be like, oh, this is its own nation now? Like... Yeah. We should probably have our own government. Before I, Amer that doesn't even make sense. I put at first I put eighteen seventy one, but I think that's when the statute of secrecy was 
invented. How could they have the Magical Congress of the United States of America before America was a thing? Yeah, that sounds like a poorly fact-checked bit of information. Almost yeah. as if it was done by a Brit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost. <laughs> this is I, I an annoying guess. question. Question 24. What was the first wand that Ollivander had Harry try? The first one? That's baloney. No, give me the multiple I'll go multiple choice because <laughs> yeah, I have no sure. idea. Yeah. Option one. Maple and Phoenix Feather, seven inches, quite whippy. Oh whippy with a with an extra H E H in there. Option two. Ebony and unicorn hair, eight and a half inches, springy. Option three. Beach and dragon heart string, nine inches, nice and flexible. Option four. Ash and unicorn hair, nine and a half inches, reasonably supple. My thing is, all of these seem kind of short yeah. in length. Oh, did you give the, was he giving lengths? Yeah. I did, yeah. Sorry, oh. do you want me to go through the lengths again? My hands from here to here are nine inches. Wow. So, like, That's a short wand. It's a really short wand. Is like, that how you of, measure it? Well, I just happen to huh. know it. It's like, I have, I have like, Big hands, but they all yeah they all seem very very short to me. Unless maybe like early on in the books, wands were just smaller, and then they because isn't his wand like eleven inches? Yeah, maybe that's why these were all wrong. He thought you need a small one, and then it turned out Harry needed a long one. All right, I got an answer. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. I want B. I want C. Ben gets the point. No! Excellent. Uh, Game on. Basically, I was fairly certain that he didn't Beach. have a phoenix wand first. Yeah, I was um, positive there was no maple. I think ash and unicorn hair is Ron's wand. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what I came down to. I was like, no, nope, it's coin flip between these two. Man, All right, clogging my way back, you guys. Come back okay. in the century. <laughs> Question twenty-five. Who kept coming to shake Harry's hand in the leaky cauldron? Who kept coming when? This is. I I, I, I want to um, say when but, he comes with Hagrid. Okay, I, I was going to say that. Yeah, I didn't want to give you the wrong piece of information. I think I've got it right, but uh, there is another. Okay. Okay. Ready? I think you got it. Three, two, one. Diggle is diggle. Oh, Sturgis Podmore. So you've got one of the options, but neither of you have got it right. Ah, uh, some woman. It's Doris Crockford. Doris, Doris Crockford, Crockford, Mr. Potter. Yeah, I can hear it now. Doris Crockford came back for seconds. Diggle's diggle is in there. He's the one. He's like, he remembers me. All of my Harry Potter memories are in Jim Dale's voices. Yeah. Well, yeah. There, I consider those to be canon. Canon. Like, I would say to the extent of... When he gets to the Quidditch World Cup, one of the voices of a random passerby he uses is Vernon Dursley's voice. Oh, uh, yeah. And, I, like, while I was listening to, like, that particular chapter, I was like, is it possible that Vernon Dursley has a wizard relative? Like, specifically because he uses a Vernon Dursley voice. <laughs> That's funny. But he also, every once in a while, and it's so funny when he does this, I think Arthur Weasley's voice comes off a little... Oh, Vernon-y? Vernon-y. Mm. Uh, but it's strange because it's, like, such a kind version right. of Vernon's voice. So, like, it's different because it's kind. It's like, they're just father voices. He's yeah, 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 yeah. Question 26. What was the name of the potions book that showed Hermione how to brew polyjuice potion in Chamber of Secrets? This is an interesting one because I believe that the actual ingredients list is in advanced potion making because I think it's in their yeah. six year book. Yeah. But it's not, that's not the book they use in second year. I would take multiple choice. Sure. Option one, advanced potion making. Option two, Dr. Vindictus Viridian's Guide to Sorcery and Potions. Option three, Secrets of the Darkest Art. And option four, Most Potent Potions. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. D. Most post- Potent Potions. Yes. That is correct. Excellent. Secrets of the Darkest Art is where they learn about. Horcruxes. Horcruxes. Question 27. What wrong name did Professor Binns call Seamus Finnegan in Chamber of Secrets? Seamus Gorman. Whoa, how weird would that be? That would be very weird. Do people ever compare you to Seamus Finnegan? Has that ever come up? Never. No? No once. Wow. I'd go multiple choice. I would go multiple choice. Let's do it. These are all very Irish names. I'm going to get them very wrong and someone's actually... Okay. Option one. Finlay. Finlay? Finley with a Y, with an E, with an A. We got there in the end. Finley with an A. (laughs) (laughs) O'Hagan, also with A's. O'Flaherty and O'Gormley. All right, three, two, one. Finley. Finley. It is O'Flaherty. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's. I feel like the O'Gormley was a bit of a a joke that we'd already made there. I think so. Question twenty-eight. 
What spell did Snape use to vanish the snake at the dueling club? What does he I'll use to take care of that for you, Potter? Yeah. Would you like the options? I would take them. Sure. I'll take them. Option one, Cobria Evanesca. Option two, Vipera Evanesca. Option three, Pythona Evanesca. And option four, Serpina Evanesca. Well, people will see that I wrote down Evanesco before. Wow. That is we impressive. That. All right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. D. D. The correct answer is Vipera Evanesca. Really? Yeah. No way. They're Vipera. all they're all big uh, puns on snake names, aren't they? So. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I too noticed that. <laughs> Sometimes it's like one of those things where you're like, do you need to be like, you know, aware of the animal kingdom? Like, if you were to use the cobra one, would it I know. Work? Like, well, I was just going for the like the most generic snake one. That's me too. I was like, I don't think it was a, just... a viper. They don't describe it as a viper. Question twenty nine. What is Harry's room number at the Leaky Cauldron in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? Who knows? Do you know? No! Oh, I hate this. I know. Okay. You ready? No. I feel like this is a- Can you hear it? No, I feel like okay. this is such a dumb answer though. But it's what came to my mind, so I'd hate yeah. to not ask. Three, two, one. Four. Three. Correct answer was 11. Ah, uh, I wasn't gonna get it. Otherwise I was thinking like 12. I, I feel like in my brain I can hear like the phrase, Room number four is available. Doesn't matter. Maybe that's film. Yeah. Question 30. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Bellatrix and Narcissa visit Snape in the second chapter. After apparating to Spinner's End, they kill an animal because they thought it might be an aura. What animal was it? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. A fox. That a is fox. correct. What does the Come fox say? Boom. Yeah, you're welcome for that. wonder if there's going to be a small surge in the viewership of the old music video, What Does the Fox Say? Instead of going to look that up, you should go just listen to the Pixar Theory song again. Yeah, yeah. but if you do listen to What Does the Fox Say, you should comment the Super Carlin Brothers sent me. Oh, that too. But like Pixar Theory song. But then go to the Pixar Theory song and be like, what does the fox say in the comments? Oh, That's what you should really it. do. You done? Yeah. <laughs> Seamus is like, stop. I was like, your offer was too good. Now we're going to go do that instead. Question 31. How many tails are in the tails of Beetle the Bard? Oh, butts. I thought this one was easy. You think so? Yeah. Well, do you not have the book? I do. I, I I mean, but like I couldn't, I have all the Harry Potter books. I couldn't tell you how many chapters I feel like I could name them, the tale. The, I was going to say the number there, but. <laughs> yes, Seamus. Uh, I was going to try to list the things. Yeah, I, I know. That, I know it feels, that feels dumb. Three, two, one, six, nine. Five is the correct answer. Man. It's like not enough. It doesn't seem like enough. Question 32. Who invented flu powder? Who invented flu powder? Well, my goodness. That's a question right there. That is a question. I have multiple choice, please. Yeah. Option one, Ignatius Wordsmith. Option two, Ignatia Wildsmith. Option three, Igor Wilding. And option four, Irene Wilder. So what I'm hearing is that's no help at all. What is C? What is D? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, C. Ben gets the point. No. Yes. That is, man, that's a complete guess. And did you have any reasoning? Uh, Ignatia sounds like Ignite. And that Wordsmith, works. Wordsmith seems like someone who is good at talking. Yeah. Unlike me in this moment. Right. Yeah. Question 33. In Goblet of Fire, what is the password that Harry uses to access the prefect's bathroom? I always get this wrong. We get this one a lot? I feel like, ah, uh, maybe not. Three, two, one. Pine Fresh. Pine Fresh. Ben, you got it right. But so did I. So, so did you, but Ben always gets it wrong. You always get it right. <laughs> the way you said it, like, wait a minute. Question 34. What inscription is carved round the top of the mirror. They're talking about the mirror from yeah, the yeah, philosopher's yeah, yeah, yeah. stone. I mean... I, I will accept the answer if you write it forwards. Right. Because it's quite complicated to write yeah, it Yeah, it's backwards. Write it backwards. I don't know. Man, I don't know it, like, entirely. I feel like we obviously we, we very much both know the general sense yeah. of what the, the whole idea and clever nature of the mirror of error says. This is, is, like, where if I could see it written out, I could totally... 
Yeah. I don't know that I could. Like, if you gave me a whole bunch of options that were all... Oh, yeah, like, just, like, backwards writing. N not backwards writing, but, like, even if you gave me the forwards writing and they were all general sentiments of what mm -hmm. you see is your heart's desire. Right. Like, I wouldn't know what the specific selection of words is. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Seamus, do you know this one offhand? Would you just know this? Um, no, this, this is a horrible question, if I'm honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I, th I think I could get pretty close forwards. Are all but, of your... But the actual backwards answer, like, I don't know how to say it, but it doesn't even put the words together. Like, it just mumble jumbles. Error said is obviously desi desire backwards. Yeah. Right. But the rest of them, like, they mix and match. Like, so you might take some of a word and then start, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but you can see it better well, on paper. Obviously, neither of us know this from memory. I, I mean, I barely have a guess. I'm just trying to think of, like, the front half of the sentence or something. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Look here to see your heart's desire. I said, what you see. yeah, what you see is your heart's greatest desire. So um, the correct answer is, Erised straw, eru oit ub kafru oit on wahosi. Wonderful. Which means I show not your face, but your heart's desire. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm perfectly fine with not getting that one. I'm I'm fine with that. But what I'm trying to say is that like, so for example, with hearts, they they just use straw, and then the eh from the start is then added on to the end of your. It's like so they mix and match. Oh well, that's how it is. It's yeah. not each word yeah. backwards. Mm. It is the letters are jumbled between the words. Mm, so that was what confused yeah. me. Oh, okay. Yeah. What would you see? Oh God, I have no idea. Really? I would have a pet polar bear. Question 35. What is Colin Creevy's dad's profession? Okay, I got it. You got it? Where's your head at? Well, I was thinking about the, the obvious. The obvious? The obvious. What's the obvious? Blacksmith. Sure. So what's like a blacksmith, but not? Right, I'd say that's pretty much what I wrote down. Three, two, one. He's a milkman. Oh! That is so close. Oh, yes, it is a milkman. Man, you're a man. I thought mailman, and I was like, no, it's not quite that. It's like a delivery guy that starts with an M. Man! Mailman was one of the options as well, so mm. that would have thrown you off a lot. I actually, Damn. I don't think, I think if we had gone multiple choice that I would have registered with Milkman. The My immediate thought was, I was like, is, is there something related to photography? Oh. Because he's got like the camera <laughs> and he's like learning how to develop and stuff. But that would seem like way too obvious. No. Yeah, the camera's largely because his parents are muggles and he wants to be able to show them like, what's up? What's up, yeah. 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 Question 36. Where did Madame Marsh get off the night bus looking queasy the first time Harry rode the bus? And the only time to my knowledge. No, she's on no, there Madame twice. No, Marsh is on uh, there both times. It's like one of those fun kind of Easter eggs. Yeah, she's, she's on there, there twice. twice. Uh, is it like just like an obscure place in the UK? I think it's just, well... I mean, I could tell you whereabouts in the UK, but I don't think that would narrow it down for you very much. So. I tell you, the word I've written down, I'm not sure whether it's describing like a region or a town or a city, or if I'm even right. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is a place or not. <laughs> Three, two, one. I wrote down Essex? Oh, no, you're both miles off. It's Abergavenny. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. This is what I find very weird, though, is Abergavenny. that Ab Abergavenny is, give, is the correct answer, and then all the other options are Scottish, which, for context, Abergavenny's in Wales. This is, this is like <laughs> one of those things to me that, like, I think my working comp, like, understanding of the different regions of the UK is so low. Oh, for sure. So you said miles off, meaning Essex is not near Abergavenny. Uh, no, well, I mean, closer than Scotland, but... <laughs> but Essex is a region or a place in the UK. Essex is a place. Right, yeah. see, so to me, not miles off. <laughs> I mean... Like, I, I, the fact that this would be like, get like... Yeah, I understand what you mean. <laughs> like, if this would be like someone saying like, where do the Carlins live? It'd be like, California? Like, not even close. Right. But like, to them, they'd be like, I named a state. What do you mean? Right. <laughs> we live in Virginia. I, I can honestly tell you that there are absolutely <laughs> zero circumstances with a hundred guesses that I ever, I couldn't have even- I didn't even know that was a place. place. Even if oh. you gave us the multiple choice, wouldn't have helped. I would have thought if that I, I would've... If I had named the other Scottish places, would you have known they were places? Inverness, Loch Ness, Oh, you know that one. Yeah. Aberdeen, Dundee, and then Nocturne Alley just thrown in the bottom there for there some reason. There was five? They gave six options. I simply would have known that it was not Loch Ness because I would remember that. Okay, pressure's on now, Ben. Okay. You've got to start catching this, this lead up. I will. Um, right now. Starting now. Question 37. What is the name of the ward that Neville's parents are in? I have uh, words that seem very... Okay. Irreversible spell damage. 
I said clinically incurable afflictions. I kind of want you guys to do this again because it's a name they're looking for. Like the, the ward is named after someone, like a person. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, I don't know if you want to try again because that was not... I don't know if I, I didn't make that clear, but yeah, it's like a person's name, Ward. Or... I, I do know <laughs> that it is named after somebody, but I, I, I don't, don't have I don't know story. who it is either. Okay. And Would you this like is to... the, this is right, by the way. Okay. But... Well, the correct answer is the Janice Thickey Ward. Thickey with a T-H. Okay. Janice Thickey. Goodness. I really want to know how people at home are doing on this right I know. Now. Like, are you guys Janice getting me? Janice Thickey. It's a question just for you, Ben. Okay. Question 38. How old was Stan Shumpike when oh he gosh. was arrested? I mean, I have my logic, but no. Yeah. Three, two, one. 22. 23. Correct answer is uh, 21. Wow. And you both your screen recording thing has popped up. Oh, <laughs> 21. 21. Is he 17 in The Prisoner of Azkaban? You are asking the wrong person. I thought he get arrested in Half-Blood Prince. I think he gets arrested in Half-Blood Prince, but I thought oh. that he was 19 on the night bus. I think he's 18 on the night bus, because that would make my math correct. Question 39. What year was the Ministry of Magic formed in Great Britain? Who knows? Who knows? That's what I'm saying. Multiple choice? I don't <laughs> Throw know. Throw it at us. Multiple Let's do choice it. it up. Option one, 1492. Sorry, say that? Okay. Option two, 1658, option three, 1707, and option four, 1764. Okay, three, two, yep. one. 1658. 1492. Correct answer was C, 1707, which is interestingly it's after, after Makusa. Makusa? <laughs> That's no. what I was thinking. Okay, there, <laughs> no! That's baloney. 1492 is when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I know. There, there's uh, actually... I was like, what is the relevance of that year? Because uh, I was like, that year kept sticking out to me for some reason. No, that so, is the reason. <laughs> yeah, so for, that's the Columbus year. But like, for some reason, I actually, I felt like I had it in my head that there was some, like that I, that I had seen something historically significant happen in the wizarding world in 1492. And I was like, it's such a like novel year to choose. Yeah. So I, I almost want to go and look to see if there is in fact some type of like significant wizarding event that happens on that year. Because it is possible. I, I've already Googled this. What is it? Nearly Headless Nick was beheaded. Ah, oh, oh, okay. You were right. Man. You were right. Okay. Question 40. Here we go. In the Fountain of Fair Fortune, who is able to overcome the challenge of the White Worm? So this is Tales of Beetle the Bard. This is one of the Tales of Beetle the Bard. And we're looking for a name. Do you want the options? Yeah. <laughs> option one, Sir Luckless. Option two, Amata, A-M-A-T-A. -A. Option three, Alfelda, Alfeda, A-L-T-H-E-D-A. -E and option four, Asha, A-S-H-A-A. Who was able to overcome the challenge of the white worm? Yes, that is the question. This is... This is a one in four, I imagine. This is basically just one in four. So I've read The Tales of Beetle the Bard once uh, when we got the hard copy, just because it was like, okay, we need to have a working knowledge of this information. I have not read it. Okay. Oh. So, so I don't know. If I'm remembering correctly, is there a gentleman and three sisters? Or three women? I think you'll find that the, 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 that's the people listed. Yes, oh, yeah, no, okay. I, yeah, I understand. So the... I, I think you'll find. <laughs> okay. Stabaroo? Yeah. Three, two, one. I said Asha. I said A. Sir Lockwood. Jonathan is right. Yeah! And Come that, on. I think, secures the... Well, what do you know? Players. I have completely bonkers reasoning on this. In Solo, the movie, the gang they work for at the beginning is the White Worms. So I was just like, whose name is the most similar to Kira? Because that's Han Solo's <laughs> girlfriend. And I was like, that's only four letters? Asha. That and is I have, so funny. I know. <laughs> that is straight up absurd. I know. But it, look, I got the right answer. So I was like, I, all I was thinking was there must be some sort of white worm thing in mythology I'm unfamiliar with that both J.K. Rowling and Star Wars have like on, landed on. And, yeah. that, and that both characters are a reference to the girl who outsmarts her in that story. I can't decide if I feel like you have a certain amount of knowledge and luck on your side. I don't know. 
The harder you work, the luckier you get. Luck favors the prepared, darling. Name that character. Everyone knows. Ben will have to have an amazing comeback to win this now because we've got two questions and he's got to recover four points. <laughs> <laughs> so extra accuracy. Look good. <laughs> Question 41. Who was famous for intricately carved wands containing Thunderbird tail feathers? What kind of malarkey is this? <laughs> I feel like we have this gone is, off of the, the sheer the deep end. Is this a tiebreaker? No, we no? have. I, we can look at the tiebreaker no, question later. No, I do if you not want. want to. This is <laughs> this is off the deep end. I mean, do you have a guess? I have a guess, but it's not right. You have a guess too. Sure. You have the same guess. Three, two, one. I said he's salt sire. He's salt sire. Correct answer is Shikoba Wolf. Yeah, Shikoba Wolf. It's definitely a, an American person. Yeah, yeah. And the only wand maker I know from America is a salt sire. So there we go. It was a good guess. I'm gonna do nothing but go home and just reread every single Potter this is article. So ever. bonkers. I feel like I feel like I have a strong knowledge about Harry Potter, and I'm feeling so vulnerable right now. Question forty two. How much cash did Fred and George bet with Ludo Bagman? Oh, this is like a really... Do you have the exact numbers? No. Okay, cool. I'll give you two points if you get all of the numbers, just so Ben can try and get 50% on this quiz. Okay, <laughs> deal. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. That's it. 63 galleons, 17 sickles, and five canuts. Ben, you are not, you haven't done badly. You've got the galleons right. Wow. And for that, I'm going to give you a point. Okay. So you get 20 points. I want to know if they included the trick wand. They did not. Oh! Wow. Oh! The correct yes. answer is 37 galleons, 15 sickles, Mm. and three knuts. Wow. Knuts. Knuts, uh, Ben. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say also that you are wrong in that they also give him a trick wand, which Ludo assigns worth five, five galleons. galleons. That's true. And now a special thank you to all of the patrons who submitted questions for today, including Andy King, Angus Keenan, Anna, Arati, Asham and Rich, Ben Henderson, Brandon, Brandon Richardson, Brendan McKenna, Chris Ray, Dola Sparing, Donna, Elizabeth Carlton, Ellie Duffy, Emerald, Bitbit Bit Sarah, Flor Delis, Jackie Thomas, Jacob Apple, Jacob Weber, Jared, JJ, John Sharp, Joshua, Kat, Catherine, Katie, Luke Gibson, Maddie Dev, Notkin, Rachel, Rachel, Timothy Isom. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of the great questions. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Harry Potter, what do we call this? Mega Bowl? The Mega Bowl. The Mega Ist Bowl. I hope that this was some entertainment while you were in quarantine. And if this is well after the quarantine, I hope you just had a good time being here for fun. a while. Also, everybody be sure to give a huge shout out to Scott, our video editor, in the comments down below because this was a long haul for him. Yes. And he suffered through it well like done, a true Scott. champion. Yes, let us know, how did you do? Did you beat us? Also, if you would like to have the opportunity to submit your own questions in the future, you can sign up for the Quizmaster tier at patreon.com slash supercarlinbrothers. Otherwise, guys, until next time, bye! bye.